Welcome to the gallery. I'm your host, Paula Hersey. And this month and next month in our gallery, we have wonderful artists showing their work. The Visual Artist Cooperative is here for two months. I think I've always been an artist. Since I was five years old, my uh, kindergarten teacher called my mother in to tell her or to show her something that I had, had done where there was this lady who was wearing a hat and she was walking a dog but she was wearing a hat upon a hat upon a hat upon a hat upon a hat <laughs> and uh, anyways I think the um, the teacher asked if she could keep that particular painting. I first had been a photographer and I think I got my first camera at the age of eight years old and that's when it began. And uh, I have just chronicled life and nature for my entire life. And I actually started drawing when I was a child um, and uh, started taking lessons at about age 10. And um, I've just always been inspired by what I see and how it makes me feel. I knew I was an artist when I was getting tossed out of classes for drawing the faces of the nuns. <laughs> I suppose in school, uh, when there was some work to be done for the billboard, the boards, or I would be the one to, to do the billboards or whatever. Well, I can never remember not doing art. So as a little kid, and uh, I'm, as I said, one of three girls, and we're very close in age, and every Christmas we would get the same gift, but maybe a different color. And one Christmas, I got a set of paints. And I realized it was so special to me because I realized my parents saw something in me, finally, and uh, encouraged me. When I got into high school, um, I was in Boston. Um, and the Boston Museum of Fine Arts had a wonderful program for the talented art uh, students in the high schools in Boston. And I was privileged to be one of those who were chosen to take this program. Recently, I'm really excited about encaustic painting, which is um, an ancient uh, method of painting with beeswax and um, pigment that goes back to the Greeks and Romans uh, 5,000 years. So it's totally archival process. What happened is I started out in oil painting and I took an etching class as an undergraduate and somehow immediately had a uh, style in it, just naturally. So when graduate school I switched from being a painting major to being an etching major and did that for many, many, many years and now I'm more into doing mixed media and uh, um, recycle things and message things and that sort of stuff. My hand was not as steady as I wanted my, um, my paintings to be. So <laughs> out of frustration, I developed a technique that I actually earned a patent on at, um, back in 1984. Um, and it is a raised edge that I create on the canvas that you can mm -hmm. see here. It's a stitched edge and it's rigid. And I stitch it, I gesso it. So my paintings do take a little bit of pre-planning Ever since I started doing watercolor um, 15 years ago or so, um, and uh, once I started, I didn't want to do anything else. It's a combination. You can, you can start with a painting and add to it elements of uh, different color, texture, depth by adding um, textiles to it, tissue paper you know, different media that you can you can add in and in, in using like matte medium to glue things down and it brings in uh, so much more variety than just acrylic painting by itself. What I do is um, I take photographs and I do my own printing on a large printer that I have in my um, own home and I also paint on my photographs as well oh. and I don't see the um, the difference between my art and my photography. I, I tend to blend them together and I do a lot of impressionism with both. 
and so a lot of my paintings look like photographs and a lot of my photographs look like paintings. When I saw a friend of mine doing art this way, it just, it just grabbed me. That was it. Uh, it's oil bar. It's, um, it's like a big fat crayon and it has the same properties that oil paint has. It dries the same way. It's sort of held together with wax and you just smoosh it on the paper and there's no brush. You use your hands and it's like finger painting. You mush the paint around, you mix it right on the paper, add color on color and just mix it until you think you have the right color. And if there's an underpainting, you can scratch into it and the color of the underpainting shows through. It's great fun, it really, and lends itself to abstract art, which is what I do. If I can see it, I can photograph it. I don't categorize myself, though this particular image is uh, obviously, in a way, a, a nature image, but I'm equally at home in restaurants or walking the streets of P-Town, just about, about anything. The, the issue is seeing, not subject. Or someone important once said that the subject is the thing behind the camera. Well, right now, I would say good painting of other artists and color in general. Um, and we have beautiful color on the cape. What inspires me is the way the world changes on, on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. And being part of um, uh, the world where we have a lot of change in weather, um, it's always intriguing. Every time I look out the window, I see something different. I would say the ocean. Just today, I was out with my camera and photographing the waves, the wave action um, off the shore. And I always carry my camera in my purse, no matter where I go, and the the colors on the Cape and the light on the Cape, it, there's none other. I think every artist is inspired by nature, but I was an art teacher, and those the children's art, the way they made their art, inspired me more than anything. Uh, probably I would say it's nature, the trees and the plants and. Uh, um, I do a lot of walking and I'm inspired by, by looking up and seeing, seeing beautiful things. I've always been interested in that. I would say probably um, the light. I love, I love light um, and I love nature. I'm really very hooked into nature. It's kind of my religion. I would say my imagination is what inspires me. Uh, I knew someone earlier mentioned seeing a color, and a color will stick in your head, and, and I'll close my eyes and, and see so many possibilities, and I have to try to capture those things. And I may begin with an idea in mind, but what evolves has a mind of its own, and most of the time I like what evolved better than what I had planned, because it's, it's so much more spontaneous and authentic. I'll tell you, it is anything. Anything can do it. One painting started out because I had seen some kind of red color somewhere that stayed with me, and I was like, I, I have to find that red. <laughs> <laughs> and I started trying to get to the red that I had seen. But before you know it, I had to have a line in there. And, then I, and so um, my job is to stay open. That's what I think my job is as an artist is to stay open. Uh, somebody said, don't ask the artist what their painting is about. They don't know. 